I invite you to stand if you are able for the reading of the gospel this morning. The gospel lesson comes from the gospel according to John, the 18th chapter, beginning at verse 33. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, and he summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? And Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. And Pilate asked him, So, are you a king? And Jesus answered, You say that I am king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate asked him, What is truth? The word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Have you ever had one of those conversations where you're talking to someone and as the conversation begins to unfold, there's more interruptions than understanding. There's more frustration than resolution or insight. And finally, after the conversation breaches that breaking point, you look at the other and you say, we're not talking about the same thing, are we? There's that uncomfortable laugh and chuckle that you kind of misconnected or missed a point of connection and, and begin to move forward. That's not the type of conversation that Jesus and Pilate were having in that moment on that day. There was no laughter to clear the air. There was no, I'm sorry, I misunderstood what you were saying. There's instead growing frustration and Jesus becoming resilient and firm in what he believes. Pilate and Jesus. Just let's be clear about a few things. This isn't a sermon that I'm bringing back from Holy Week a couple years ago. The text for today focuses on Christ the King Sunday. And as we end our Christian year, the text that we are given to wrestle with, to think about, to reflect on, is that conversation that Pilate and Jesus were having about the kingdom. And the confusion in the conversation about two different types of kingdoms and the dynamics that were going on within that room were far weightier than the few lines that I shared with you. Royalty and kingdom and kings and agenda and power, they are all mixed within that one conversation that Pilate and Jesus were having in a culmination of many, many months and many, many years. There is no confusion in the text But there was certainly confusion in the room. How Pilate viewed what a king is and what a kingdom looks like and how Jesus was talking about being the king of the kingdom of God. Two distinctly different definitions, two distinct different understandings. There was Pilate. Pilate the most powerful ruler running back and forth, inside conversing with Jesus and outside with the Jewish leaders, not looking for an easy answer, but certainly looking for a way to resolve this conflict that was brewing as the city was filled with people for Passover. Pilate was certainly looking for a way to resolve this conflict in a very peaceable way. He did not want to walk away from this with egg on his face. He did not want to see an uprising, a revolt against him. And even though he wanted nothing to do with this discussion, conversation, it was placed in his lap, and he knew that he had to do something with it. So, you're a king, 
Jesus' response, is this your idea? Now, in this moment, if we were to just step back a little bit, we might want to coach Jesus a little bit. Jesus, it might be time to use your softer side, your more human side, your more compassionate side that we see time and time again. But that's not the side that Jesus was using. For Jesus to back down from the kingdom of God and to redefine the kingdom so Pilate could understand would be going against everything that he had put himself in. Jesus' greatest commandment, for instance, love one another. To back down to Pilate would be say, only love those individuals that you like or that you agree with, that you're close to, that you have something in common with. In that moment, Jesus was not about to soften the kingdom at any expense, at any cost. For the kingdom of God, for Jesus has no end. And he knew that empires would come and go, rulers would be here today and gone tomorrow. But the kingdom that Jesus was building and in dialogue, with conversation, dialogue through conversation with Pilate about was here to stay. While Pilate was being coached from the outside, Jesus from inside the palace was clear. This is the reason why I was born, and for this reason I came into the world. Pilate had no idea what Jesus was talking about. He merely wanted to manage this, this, this crisis that was placed in his lap. What will it take to get him out of here. And Jesus said, I don't negotiate with politicians. Jesus is no stranger to the political structures of the world in Judea at that time. He entered into a political structure with no place to live and to be born when his parents had to travel to Bethlehem. The political and religious dialogue that was going on and debate in Judea at that time had been going on from before Jesus' time to during Jesus' time and definitely after. Jesus was giving birth to a new kind of world kingdom, a kingdom that would have no end. And so Jesus stood alone. No advisors, no followers. He, stand, he stood on what he believed in. And he believed in all struggles for justice and turning power upside down in exchange for the power and practice of love made real. The love made real that was exemplified by the Samaritan, the one that helped the one dying alongside the road. The love that was made real when Jesus healed the leper and greeted him that was outcast. The love that was made real by the welcome to the father after his son had left home and returned and loved both of his sons equally. For this kingdom to be made real, love conquered all. And for Jesus, that meant he would not take a buyout or a quick deal from Pilate. He stood firm. He stood firm because he believed in the struggle for justice for all people and that the kingdom would come, a kingdom that is still in process, still being built, still based on love that will conquer all, and the practice of love and mercy will never end, but only continue to make the kingdom stronger here on earth. Where are we at the close of this year as the church today? How has the kingdom of God been working in the day-to-day -day conversations that we have? What gifts are we bringing to the conversation? The kingdom of God comes each and every day as opportunity, 
as presence through conversations that are missed and conversations that are grabbed. When I think about kingdom building, I think about my own struggle. I think about working in a community in West Dallas. I was equipped with a three-year graduate degree, coursework in church history and in theology and Bible and practical ministry. I was ready to begin building the kingdom here on earth. And so, as I found myself in my, in my internship working with teenagers living on the street, I had many, many answers to this problem. But after a couple months, we, begin, we began to grow frustrated with one another. Things were not going too well. I wasn't as concerned about my academic grade at that point in time, but I was more concerned with why this was not working. And so, in a very fruitful conversation that we had in a parking lot, we were quite honest and frank with each other. And one of, the, one of the young men said to me, why do I care about my future when I have no idea if I will be here tomorrow? Violence, person to person, was an everyday occurrence in this neighborhood. These teenagers had no home, so they found refuge in many different places. And so living moment to moment, day by day, was nothing new. And in that moment, I realized that my ideas, my dreams and desires for the kingdom were lacking because taking away another's humanness does not help build the kingdom. It distracts from it. So once we had that conversation, things changed. We recognized each other for the gifts that we brought to the moment as we mowed lawns, as we picked up dirty needles, as we cleaned up vacant lots. We worked side by side, hand in hand. And when I left, we said goodbye knowing that we would never see one another again, but knowing that we helped to build the kingdom at that time and in that place. Are the conversations that we're having in the kingdom going anywhere today? And do we hear Jesus' voice as he continues to call, come to me all you who are weary and I will give you rest? As our Christian year comes to a close, we are confronted with many, many things to do. And at the same time, we'll be distracted by the many, many things that we need to do in the next month. At the same time, we have many things to do. We look around and we see the chaos, the uncertainty, the disappointment in the kingdom outside of the kingdom of God. How are we to build? I pull from the hymn, Lead On, O King Eternal, these words. For not with swords loud clashing, no roll of stirring drums, with deeds of love and mercy, the heavenly kingdoms come. The next steps for the kingdom of God are up to us. With deeds of love and mercy, the kingdom of God becomes a reality. And through our daily conversations that we have, we find ways and opportunities to share those deeds of love and mercy with others around us. It is through those conversations that we are changed. Our numbness begins to turn into feeling and we find a love, a love that conquers all, that heals all, that binds us together. The kingdom of God, right here, right now. Amen. 
Thank you for joining in worship today. Please take a few moments after church to go downside, to go downstairs and experience the different kind of Christmas fair that is going on downstairs to support the different outreach ministries that we are engaged as as a community. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we are called to this place. We are also called to the world to be kingdom builders. May you find ways in your day-to-day conversations to practice love mercy and kindness to those that you encounter. And when you do, you make real the kingdom of God here on earth. Let us go in peace. Amen.